Hi everyone, happy spring. Doesn't feel so good to be able to say those words again. I'm sitting out here on the patio and it is a beautiful, beautiful day today. So uh, thank you all for bearing with me while I took a little bit of a YouTube break just to kind of decompress and um, sort th some things out in the home and in the garden and now I am back. And I'm back at you with a series that I'd like to call Fixing My Garden. So you're gonna help me, you guys. I wanna hear your thoughts, I wanna hear your feedback. Tell me what projects you're working on and what you're fixing in your garden and maybe we can work on some things together and get some ideas from each other. I'm excited and I'm charged up for this season. So fixing my garden. For me, that is going to, that, that's going to be a process. <laughs> so this is step one. I've already done a couple things that I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, but this is step one. And I'd like to think that at the end of the season, you know, come fall, we'll come back to this video and we'll see how much my garden has grown and how much I was able to accomplish little by little, because you can get a lot done in a short period of time. So when we put the greenhouse in this past year, um, it kind of, everything came to was stop the season was coming to an end and the garden was going to sleep so over the winter I've kind of reassessed what that means for my garden what do I really need what things do I want to change you know we have quite a small garden so I'm working on some things to change the layout and really maximize the space open things up make it be a little bit more spacious and not feel as confined so I'm going to start out front and I'm going to show you a couple things I did out there that have been on my to-do list and let's get some to-do lists together I'm going to start chipping away at mine and I'll see you out front and I'll show you some things that I've already started working on to fix this garden so you can see that things are really starting to wake up I've got tulips coming back which is always a nice surprise I've got lots of daffodils starting to uh, come up here in the back flower beds there and let's take a moment and just appreciate my neighbors beautiful magnolia tree this is a Jane magnolia I know sometimes people think about magnolias and you th usually think about the large white flowers uh, they're all different types of magnolias and this is one and it is beautiful it's one of those things that I wake up in the morning and I look out our bedroom window and it's the first thing that I see and it just puts my day off to a great start. So let's fix this garden. A couple weeks ago, I made a change that I have been wanting to make for quite a while, but I kept putting it off and putting it off because I just did. <laughs> you know that how that goes. Sometimes when it's things that you know you need to do, but you don't want to do for various reasons, you know, it just kind of sits there on the back burner. So I finally, uh, I finally did that. And what I wanted to do was, so these are wee white hydrangeas I have in the front here. And I've had these for quite a few years. I apologize for the shadow, um, but I've had these here for quite a few years now and they're beautiful. They're a dwarf reblooming hydrangea, which is perfect for my small space here. Behind those, these are evergreen yews. And what was happening was when I planted the yews and I planted the hydrangeas, they were both much smaller, okay? And as we know, plants grow. Sometimes when you plant things, you plant them, kind of close together knowing that they're gonna get big and eventually you may have to move them. So that's what happened here. My hydrangeas were back here and they were really kind of growing into the U. Now last year I started to notice that the hydrangeas were kind of growing forward and they were getting crowded, completely crowded. They were not putting on as much growth. The foliage looked like it was suffering. Um, you know, it, it was just too close for comfort for these plants. So what I did was I went ahead and I dug them up and I moved them forward. Now I've got a nice buffer, as you can see, in between the yews and the hydrangeas. Now these only get to be, oh, I wanna say 30 inches, 30 inches tall and 30 inches wide. These are petite, these are a great size. So. I've got those that I move forward here in the front and they are already showing signs of life. I did not kill these during the transplant, so that's always good news. 
Um, these are also re-blooming, which I love. So they start out with a nice flush of blooms and then um, they take a little bit of a break and then in late summer they put on another flush of blooms that usually will even take me into fall. They're just beautiful. They grow on new and old wood. I really recommend um, this hydrangea a lot. It's from Proven Wonders Color Choice and I really, really like it. So that is something I did to fix my garden and I did that on both sides here. So I'm very excited about that. Another thing that this will be a future, now I don't know if it will happen this year, uh, but it is on the agenda. Another thing to fix my garden, uh, fix my house, I guess I should say. We've got the one railing here and it's always bothered me. I love symmetry. I don't love having the one railing. I don't even like the style of the railing to be honest. And then the pots down the steps. So. What I'd like to do is ultimately remove this uh, metal railing and put nice wood spindles and railings coming off the posts here. It will widen the steps. It'll give a larger area to walk, a larger area for me to put my flower pots. It'll just be better all around. So now I'm gonna show you the back and a couple of changes that I made to the backyard. Okay, so I'm at the back entry now on my long-term list of fixing this garden will be moving our central AC to the other side of the house, but that's for a different day. So we've got the spiral arborvitaes. These are emerald green arborvitaes, and I got them shaped already, but I did maintain them and I do maintain them because they will fill in and they will turn back into a bushy arborvitae if you don't maintain them. So um, I do keep up with them. I'm not trimming on them just yet. It's a little too early in the season and you guys know how this goes. We get all excited for spring and then the next thing you know, it's gonna snow. So <laughs> I don't wanna cut any evergreens right now and encourage new growth that could end up getting, you know, nipped and burned by snow and cold because we know how that goes. Okay, let's go in. You can see here, these are the sprinters. Those are the quart size sprinter boxwoods that I planted last year. And look how big they're getting, you guys. They're looking so good and have put on so much growth from their teeny tiny little quarts last year. So you can really see how much things grow in a short period of time. So in fixing this area, firstly, I need to continue with my cleanup. I'm starting to rake up some of the leaves. I leave my leaves and um, keep that down as like a leaf mulch over the winter. It's great for the insects. It's great for, you know, the, the critters. It's great for everything. It's just a wonderful thing and it breaks down and it feeds your soil. So I just let that be and that's, um, that's something I'm working on right now. I need to get some fresh mulch in here. You can see that there is red block that is stabilizing the urn there which i'll be planting up soon and i can't wait i'm so excited there's a few things in here that don't make sense now that they're growing so this will be a future fixing the garden episode i'm um, just kind of walking you through now and showing you kind of what's going on there's some things here that are competing the uh euonymus there in the back that does not need to be there. It is taking up too much space and I will plant that somewhere in the backyard. Uh, just not a great spot for it. It's crowding next to this is a butterfly bush. It's a dwarf butterfly bush. And then this is a limelight prime. So this is gonna get big. This is that updated version of the limelight. And um, it's new for me, so I've not even had it bloom or anything. So I'll be excited to see that this year. Chords. That's on my fix, <laughs> fix my garden list. We'll have to ravel that up and have it not look like that. Um, so yeah, just a lot of cleanup right now. I did just uh, prune my roses maybe a month ago. I did do that a few weeks back. Clean out the window box. You can see there's still some stuff from fall in there. So we'll clean that out. Just kind of showing you the state that it's in right now. I need to get these leaves up now and get some fresh mulch in. I did just go out the other day and I fed my boxwoods. Now, um, most evergreens like holly tone, but boxwoods and arborvitaes, you wanna give 
plant tone. They don't appreciate the, the acidity that is in the holly tone. So you want to give them a nice organic plant tone. So that's what I did. I went around yesterday and then it rained a lot and watered it all in. You can see it's still kind of sitting here on the surface here. You just kind of want to go around the drip line of your plants and get a good fertilizer going there. So I have can check that off my list. So here is the big change. We removed the fence that we had separating this uh, vegetable garden area from the rest of the backyard. Now, in doing that, it was controversy. I did a poll on Instagram. Um, a lot of people liked the fence. I liked the fence. But the problem is it closed in our already small garden so much. It used to have a purpose. It used to separate our car from our backyard. So back then it made sense. You know, I, I was able to then camouflage and have plants along this pretty picket fence and not see our car parked in the driveway. Uh, before you guys even wonder or ask, especially if you're new here. Now, I had a potting shed here, which we replaced with the greenhouse, which I'm so excited about. Uh, this will be my first planting season in the spring and in the summer with the greenhouse. So I'm looking forward to it. But when we took down the shed, I then started using the one car garage as my shed. A lot of people say, oh, I couldn't give up my garage. You need to know that when we moved in about 20 years ago, this was in fact a shed. It had double doors and a dirt floor. There was no electricity. Uh, you can barely fit one car in there. We used to have a little stop sign in there so we didn't hit the wall. And there were foam strips on the sides of the walls because the car doors would literally hit the walls. Its fate was not meant to be a garage. So we took the fence out to open up this space. And in doing that, the arbor was just sitting here by itself. So I found these, they're called picket wings. And Mark and I installed these this weekend and I could not be happier with it. It anchors the arbor. It makes it feel like there's a purpose leading you into the patio. And it doesn't just feel like there's an arbor here in the middle of nowhere for no reason. It feels good and I really like it. There was a lot of debate going back and forth about to keep the fence, not keep the fence. I love the look of it. And you can see that what I did here is I've got climbing roses. This is Zephyrine Druin Rose. And I've also got Guernsey Cream Clematis that you can see there. I love to plant multiple climbing vines together so that when one isn't blooming, the other one hopefully is. And that's what I've done here. So I was able to take one of the longer canes that was on our fence and just kind of gingerly, gingerly wrap it through the fence pickets here. And then I've got a little piece of the Guernsey cream clematis there too. So that makes me feel really good. Um, Another change I made, another fix that I fixed. Um, I always had this one box wood in this beautiful container right there, and it sat here next to the bench. So you might notice that the, the bench that was here is also gone. I don't need a bench here. It was taking up too much space. It just didn't feel right. I never sat on it, and I feel like I could just do so much more in this little quadrant here and put some topiaries and some flower pots and just a whole different look now that the bench is gone. So what I did was I took the boxwood out of this container and I put it in this terracotta pot. And then I had another boxwood that was about the same size and it was in a different pot. So long story short, I repotted two cone boxwoods into these two matching terracotta pots. They're still a little wonky and uneven and I need to even it out. But look at that, it blanks the entryway. I'm really happy with it. It gives me that balance and that symmetry that I need. So that's another fix that I made. Um, you can see that this boxwood here is a little, little golden look and that's just a little bit of that winter bronzing. And this boxwood was in a different area where it maybe wasn't getting hit with as much wind um, or you know, it wasn't freezing its took us off, I should say, as much as this one was. So I gave them a good dose of the Espoma plant tone. I put some fresh soil in there. I put a couple little pieces of ivy in there. So I love it. Like I want to permanently change things for the better. These boxwoods are here. 
they're gonna stay here. I love them, I love the look. I wanna start being able to really correct problems that have, have always bothered me and get to a point where I feel not complete. You know it's never done, you guys. But more established, more this is what I want my garden to be. So that way there's the more fun of planting the annuals, planting the containers, you know, just going out and pottering around and not, oh my gosh, I've got to fix that fence because there's no winter interest there whatsoever. I need to plant some evergreens, which is on my fix it list. You know, I want to do that. I want to, to fix those problems and we're going to do that. So if you will indulge me, we will walk through the arbor here and we will see the next change. I am so excited about this, you guys. So we just got this new teak patio set. As you guys know, teak is going to last forever and it is just that timeless and beautiful look that I have been wanting on this patio. We have had a mismatch set out here for years, you guys. If you've been following me for a while, you know this is something that has always been a sticking point with me. And the chairs were from another set. So finally, you know, we made, we made the, took the plunge and we got this beautiful teak set. Now, another debate for me was, I love this warm honey color that it is right now. Do I seal it or do I let it age? So I finally came to the decision that I wanted to let it age and get to that nice, beautiful, kind of aged gray look that you see uh, on the teak furniture. And then I will just replenish it and keep it maintained by oiling it and, and doing that kind of an upkeep with it, sand it if it needs to be sanded and keep it looking nice. But boy, am I happy with it. It's beautiful and I love it. And I've been having my coffee out here, which takes me to this area here. So we got this fire pit from Plow and Hearth a few years back. I love this fire pit. As you can see, it doubles as a coffee table. You can lift that lid off and it exposes the fire pit. I've had this here kind of sitting in the middle of nowhere. These two chairs were over here on this side, always crowded up and it just didn't feel right. It didn't make any sense. So I put them off to the side here. I put this in front. You can see I've got my little grouping of plants here. This is just the beginning phases, you guys, little bits. I've got a patio umbrella that I'm going to be placing here above the two wicker chairs because it does get quite sunny here in the afternoon. I'm just really happy with the way things are coming together. I've got my pots here with some tulips. These are just protecting from the squirrels and I will be taking this off soon because they're putting on a lot of nice, beautiful growth there. I just can feel it. I can feel it all coming together and you know, the vision that I was hoping for, of course, does anyone need a lantern? Because I've got lots. <laughs> I need to clean all these things up. Um, the window boxes could definitely use a refresh. They've had this same cocoa liner for, I don't know, four years probably. So that might be on the to-do list for this year because it really does not look very nice. And I'd like to freshen those up. Look how good that looks, you guys. Doesn't it look, that looks like it's meant to be. It looks like it fits so well. I'm so happy with it. Look how much it opens up the space when I don't have all that junk sitting there for my garage. <laughs> so it's cleanup time. Where will I put the dahlias? That was one of the uh, big questions I get here. I'm gonna, but you know what? Instead of just having it and being a straight row, I'm gonna plant some hydrangeas. I'm gonna plant some evergreens and then I'm gonna talk the dahlias in with it. I think that's the way to go. Uh, it'll look more natural. It won't just look like a big straight row. It's gonna look good. It's gonna look good. And I think this little pineapple that I had, this has been here the whole time. I just think it looks so nice framed here like this. You can see I've got my garlic coming up. The espalier apples on the fence. Oh, I love spring. Spring and fall are my two favorite seasons. Oh, and hopefully, it's a, it's a biggie for me. And speaking of this no longer being a garage, one of my major wants for this season is for Mark and I to come out, take down that garage door, put an actual door, maybe a Dutch door, maybe a French door, put in a window, window box, really make it look like a shed. And I can't not show you guys the greenhouse because I'm so excited about it. And in fact, I don't know 
I don't think I have actually showed you, we added this beautiful overhang. So in case you're new or you don't know, or you're interested, this is the Parkside greenhouse from BC Greenhouses. And it is eight by 10. I really truly love it. It is beautiful and wonderful and it makes me happy. <laughs> but we added this uh, overhang after the fact. Mark and I were out here, it was cold. I'm gonna say it was probably November when we added the overhang. And I just love, or awning, I guess you could say overhang, awning, um, awning. I like awning, we'll go with that. Um, but anyway, I just think it gives it just that like little extra, that little extra piece of charm, you know, little cottagey look to it that I love. So there's another thing that I did. You may recognize this, right? Do we recognize my wisteria? Yes, this is the wisteria that I had at my potting shed. And it was sitting in a black nursery container, sadly rotting away because I wasn't even certain that I was gonna plant it for quite a while, for all winter, you know, just in this bucket. And I could not part with it. I love the twisty, gnarly, this is 10 years old, cause I actually pulled up my order and it was about that big when I planted it. It's Amethyst Falls. It's a native wisteria, so it doesn't have the aggressive nature that the Chinese wisteria does and it's native, so we love that. Um, and I just love this wisteria. So. Hopefully there is life in this. There is green under this bark here. I have it leaning here on the awning and I can see little little signs of growth coming. So uh, I will try and train that and I will let you know how that goes. I'll let you know what I decide on to do for that on this little awning area. I don't really wanna have it uh, get onto the main roof or infringe. You know, I you see I've got the vents there and everything and I really don't want any weight or anything pressing on that glass. But on this little overhang part, you know, I, I can work that. I can get that going. And just to show you what I've got going on over here, I did just fertilize. This is a boxwood standard that I found at Lowe's two years ago. And boy, I really feel lucky. If they had two, I would have bought two because it, uh, it was quite a find. I never see these there anymore. But I love that. And I've got all the pots of tulips coming up here so lots of exciting things happening inside the greenhouse it's kind of messy in here right now but I'll show you real quick just a couple little things I've got right here look at all this new growth on my olive and then I've got my lemon tree back here with buds all over it and then look at this, this is my calamond and orange, and you can see all the fruit on there. Is that not exciting? I'm excited, you guys. Okay, I talked a lot, it's been a while, so I wanted to catch up with you all, but I wanted to kind of show you what I'm thinking for this season, bring you along at least once a week uh, for a Fixing My Garden episode. And of course, I'm gonna do more and show you guys planting uh, flower pots and pretty hanging baskets and things like that. But fix my garden with me. I need, I need your motivation. I need your encouragement. Um, I really do. It helps me. It helps me to, you know, we all as gardeners kind of feed off each other. We feed off of each other's energy and that enthusiasm. And it just really, it really kind of makes it more fun, I think. You can see I also started up the fountain back here. So that's all you guys. I will definitely see you next week and I will show you what I am fixing next in my garden and wishing you all happy spring. I will talk to you soon guys. Bye-bye.